Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat in which we would look at CPA exam questions that deal specifically with ethics on the auditing section of the CPA exam. This topic is also covered in an auditing course. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,700 plus accounting, auditing, tax, finance, as well as Excel tutorial. If you like my lectures, please like them, share them, subscribe to my YouTube. If they benefit you, it means they might benefit other people. Share the wealth. Connect with me on Instagram. On my website, farhatlectures.com, you have additional courses and supplemental material to pass your CPA exam. For example, today we're looking at ethics. If you want to learn more about ethics, check out my auditing course where I talk about this topic in details. Also, I have supplementary material to help you add 10 to 15 points to your CPA exam so you can put it behind you and pass the exam. So let's take a look at the first question. According to the rule 101 of the AI CPA code of professional conduct, independence will be impaired if a firm does which of the following? Independence is very important for auditors. So you wanna make sure you know the rules. When does when is your in, when is your independence is impaired? It means you lost your independence. It means you, you lost your credibility as far as the audit is concerned. So under what circumstances your independence is concerned uh, is compromised or impaired? One, report to the board on behalf of management. Well, he, here's what you need to know about independence. Well, guess what? You cannot be appearing or you cannot perform any operational or financial decision on behalf of management. Here's what's happening here. You report to the board of directors on behalf of management. That's on behalf of management. You're doing the management work. That's a, that's an operational thing. So one will definitely impair your independence. So we keep A, we keep C, we keep D, we can take out B because B does not have one. Two, makes operational but not financial decision. No, 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 no. It's both operational and financial you cannot make. So two would also impair your independence. If two will impair your independence, then one is out because it doesn't include two. So what we are left with is, we just have to find out if three it does impair or it does not impair your independence. So the answer is C or D performs non-attest services for an audit client. Can you perform non-attest services? What's a non-attest services? Let's assume it's tax. Can you perform tax services? Well, under certain circumstances you can, you might have to get the pre-approval uh, from the audit committee, but you can do non-attest services without compromising your independence. Therefore, three does not does not necessarily impair your independence. Therefore, the answer will be one and two. The answer will be D because three is does, doesn't does impair your independence, okay? And remember, you have to be very careful for three. The non-attest function cannot involve any operational or financial decision. And what happened under those non-attest services, usually the board of directors or the audit committee, usually the audit committee will have to approve it, would have to approve it, but it's not prohibited. Under certain circumstances, it is allowed. The first three principles of the AICPA Code of Professional Conduct are responsibility, public interest, and what's the third one? It's basically, this is a, a uh, a memory, a memory, a memory, uh, memory issue. Is it independence? Is it objectivity? Is it integrity? Or is it due care? They're all part of the of the uh, code of conduct. But which one? The first three. And the first three are responsibility, public interest, and integrity. Basically, you have to maintain the public confidence. You have to perform your responsibilities as professional person as an auditor with the highest sense of integrity. Now, what is integrity? Integrity means doing the right thing, doing what's right. Okay. Independence and objectivity, they're also part of the code of conduct, but that's part four and do care is part five. So they're all part of the, uh, of the AICPA code of, of conduct, which is something you have to be familiar with. And this is what I talk about in my, on my website, farhatlectures.com. I explain this topic to help you understand Plus, your CPA course will help you do that 
as well. But it's something that you need to be familiar with before you sit for the exam. According to the AICPA and the PCAOB standard, which of the following loans in the amount of 20000 from a financial institution audit client to a CPA would, would impair independence? Again, independence is something very important. So that's why I have you know, a couple questions about this. A, cash advance of 20000 collateralized by money market deposit in the same financial institution of 27,000. So simply put, they gave you $20,000, but you already have at that bank account, the cash deposit of 27,000, That is that, so the loan is collateralized. Can you do that? And the answer is yes, it doesn't impair your independence because you have the collateral against that money. So A is out. Once A is out, D is out because D all of the above. So now you're down to 50-50. B. Auto loan of 20000 from a financial institution or the client made under normal lending policies. Can you do that? If you're, auditing a comp if you're auditing a financial institution, could you still get an auto loan under normal lending policies? Yes, not a problem. As long as they are not treating you differently, usually the auto loan, the loan, usually the car usually is a collateral too, so that's not a big deal. That's also out. So by process of elimination, C is the answer, but let's take a look at C. Cash advance, same thing as A, from a financial institution of 20000 to be repaid within 10, 10 days. And here, the amount is a problem. Cash advance of 20000 will would impair your independence. 10000 you would have been fine. You would have been fine. So it has to be lower than 10000 Okay? So you just have to memorize this, that it has to be lower than 10000 Therefore, C will, Im will impair your independence as an auditor. Let's take a look at this question. Which of the following bodies ordinarily would not have would not have the authority? Would not. They don't have the authority to do what? To suspend or revoke your CPA license. Because eventually you're gonna get the license to practice public accounting. Now my question to you is this: who grants you the license? Who grants you the license? The state, some some jurisdiction under your state. So let's take a look at this. One, a state. CPA society. So here you have to be very careful. I just said a state and this answer has the word state. So um, would not have the authority. You would say they, they would have the authority because it's a state. Well, you have to be very careful. Those state CPA society like, for example, I'm a part of PICPA, the Pennsylvania Institute of Certified Public Ac Accountant. That's a that's a state CPA society. That's basically a social organization. It promotes professional uh, uh, pro uh, professional networking. It will help me get my CPE credits to maintain my license. Um, we have gathering. We have committees. But it doesn't. It doesn't have the authority to revoke or suspend my license. So the CPA society don't have that authority, which is that's what they're asking. Therefore, A is a potential answer. C is a potential answer. B and D are out because they're asking us which of them cannot do it. Cannot do it. The state the CPA state society can do it. Now, what I suggest you do, since we're talking about this, whatever state you are in, so if you're in New York, New York, CPA. If you are in California, CA, CPA. Join those organizations even before becoming a CPA. They do have a student, student chapter, so make sure you join them. This is where you go and you meet actual CPAs, you network if you're looking for a job, you grow your professional network, uh, and you get to know people and they will tell you what they're looking for in future CPAs. And you would learn about the industry as well. So I strongly suggest you check out your state CPA society, which is I'm part of the PI CPA. So they can do that. Two, AI CPA. So rather than Pennsylvania, this is the American AI CPA. Do they have the authority to revoke your license? If the answer is yes, then that's an answer. If the answer is no, I'm sorry, if the answer is yes, they can, but that's not the answer. If the answer is no, then two is a correct answer. Can they revoke? So what does the what does the AI CPA do? For one thing, you need to know they write your CPA exam. Okay, that's one thing that they do. They also conduct hearing in case you violate the AI CPA code of professional conduct. Now, this sounding like they can suspend or revoke your license, and the answer they cannot. They can hold the hearing kick you out of the AI CPA as a member if they want to, but they cannot suspend or revoke your CPA license. They can make a recommendation to someone to do so, but they can do it. 
the ICPA cannot revoke your license to practice. They can kick you out of the organization, but that's not suspending your license. It's also a professional organization. Also, they do have a student addition. I strongly suggest you join that as well. So two is also a correct answer. Why? Because they can. Those two cannot, cannot, cannot revoke your license. Okay? So obviously, we have the last one. Uh, so two, so basically... Two is the answer. We don't have one, two, three. It seems it's A, but let's just make sure. A state board of accountancy, and the answer is yes. Remember, when you apply for your CPA, when you apply for your CPA, you apply under a state jurisdiction. Therefore, the state itself, you apply with the state board of accountancy of a particular jurisdiction. Well, if they grant you the license, they can take it away from you. Therefore, the state board of accountancy has the has that power therefore the first two those two don't have that power in the answer which one don't have the power it's one and two if they ask if the question asks which one has the power three has the power so you have to be very careful don't have the power and on the cpa exam you don't want to you don't want to miss a question an easy question like this one let's take a look at this question a cpa is not allowed to have a fee contingent upon results in which of the following engagement. What is a fee, fee contingent? Basically, pay me based on performance. That's basically what a fee contingent is. And here is, they're asking us which one you cannot. You cannot have that contingency thing. Okay? Well, let's take a look. At, let's take a look at the first answer. Examination of perspective. First of all, let's 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 in general. You want to know the rules. In general, you cannot do an audit and say, "Well, uh, well, I'll give you uh, pay me based on my audit opinion." Hopefully, you know this. You can't do that. Same thing with reviews. So audit and reviews, because one is a, one is a positive, one is a negative assurance. You can't, you can't, you, you can't. So audit and reviews. I'm telling you, if they appear anywhere in the que question, you can't do that. Okay. Also, uh, well, we'll talk about this, okay? So I just want to make sure you know this right away. One, examination of prospective financial statement. Also, that's prohibited, clearly prohibited. You cannot examine, uh, mean prospective, it means future financial statements, what if financial statements, and get a contingent fee because you might bias your opinion. Therefore, one is, def, uh, would, is not allowed. So one is not allowed, we keep A, we keep C, we keep D, we can take out B. Okay, because one is not allowed. Review of historical financial statements, I told you. Reviews, you have to be independent in a review. Okay, so we need one and two. So one and three is out because two. So we're still now between A and D. Three, filing an original tax return form 1040. Well, can you file a tax return? Original tax. We have to. We have to be very careful here. It's an original tax. It's an original tax return. Can you file an original tax return and tell the client, "Look, just pay me based on the refund I can get you." And the answer, you can't do that because now you have every incentive to get them the highest refund, and that may push, make you push the envelope and lose your integrity because your fee is based on that original return. Therefore, you can't have that as well. We can't have that as well. So for all three, you cannot, you cannot have a fee contingent. Now you have to be very careful here because the language is important. Now, what happened if you are examining, if you are helping them, you, or, or, or you are repre representing the client on a previously filed tax return being audited by the IRS. So somebody filed the tax return originally it's being audited by the IRS. They hired you to represent them. Can you charge? Can you charge a fee if you're representing them? And the answer is yes. Remember, if you are representing them on a previously filed return, not original, original is out. That's being audited by the IRS. You tell them, look, I will help you. Now I'm gonna have to fight it hand-to-hand -hand combat with the IRS. Whatever I can get you, I'm gonna get a I'm gonna get a piece of it. Because now what's happening, you're doing the work, and the I somebody at the IRS is questioning everything that you're doing. So now you have every incentive to work on behalf of your client and based on that refund or based on the lower tax bill that the IRS will send, you're gonna you're gonna get a portion of it. You have the right to do so, but not based on the original return. And if it was rather than a review, if this was a compilation, okay, remember if it's a compilation of financial statement and they are expected to be used by, by a third party, 
and you let them know that you lack independence, that's okay. So compilation, as long as you disclose in the compilation that you lack independence and it's being used by a third party, you can charge a contingent fee, but not with a review, not with an audit, not with an original tax return, not with an examination of prospective financial statements. Very important to know these rules. Again, what I do, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to suggest, I'm going to invite you to go to my auditing course on my website, farhatlectures.com. If you want to learn more about this topic as well as many other topics, whether it's an auditing, advanced accounting, governmental, intermediate, you name it, finance courses, additional resources for your CPA exam. Look, you're going to study for your CPA exam once in your lifetime. It's a lifetime investment. Take it seriously. Study hard. Good luck and stay safe if we're still going through this coronavirus.